Hope everybody's doing great. I want to make a video of a uh, Weaver uh, four ton floor jack. It's a 73A model. Um, a lot of people will probably think, holy crap, why in the world are you rebuilding this thing? I would have just chucked it. But it has sentimental value to me. This was my great-grandpa's. He used to have a service station close to where I live now. And, um, yeah, that was the time to rebuild it. Uh, and my grandpa's, you know, has been handed down. So it's, uh, it's now in my possession. So, um, I've already completely disassembled everything. Well, not everything. Um, still got some things to still tear apart, but I figured I'd make a video on this. This thing is, whenever you hear older people say they just don't make them like it used to, well, there's... This is the truth, so, um, this thing is something special, I tell you. So this is a, um, like I said, four ton floor jack. It is a Weaver, like I said, WA-73A. Now, if you look these up, it seems like everybody and their brother had a B, 73B. Well, I guess old great grandpa decided, hey, let's be different. <laughs> There's the lifting arm right there. The armature, the jacking armature. You can see some of the springs down here that Whenever you let off on the lifting armature, they bring it back down to the lower position. So the whole end goal with this, uh, probably blast it. Well, probably not blast it, but uh, wire wheel it, paint it. Try to bring it back somewhat to its former glory. I don't know exactly the year of this. Um, I know I've been told stories that uh, <laughs> it'll it'll do more than four times. <laughs> if you can only imagine. Um, just for the simple fact, you know, these wheels. I mean, these things... These things are serious. And how you got needle bearings in here. You don't really see that. You know, until you get in some really high class stuff. Um, very cool. Very cool. Not a whole... It might not look like a whole lot right now, but eventually... We'll, uh... Make it look nice. I already got some wheels off of eBay. Um, here's the front feet. That sounded important. That's for the front feet. And they mount in like so. Um, this one here, seen better days. I was able to obtain... Uh, a lot better one. Obviously not new, but better. That one, it's okay. Ish. Bearings are a little, a little crappy, but hey, this thing don't owe to anybody anything. Tear this whole assembly apart here for your foot. That's what's really cool about this thing. You can prop this thing up. And there's a rod that goes right down through here. And as you can see, you got different holes. 
Well, there's a button with a rod coming all the way down through here. It'll lock in here. And you can actually pull this down and lift the whole thing up, teeter it on the front wheels. This right here is used for your pumping of the jack. And you can also use this. You know, this is kind of like high speed and whenever you really want to get serious. <laughs> this armature here is for letting the jack down, which is this little lever right here. Right on the side. So you just pull that. It kicks that little thing out. Let's it down. So yeah, that's going to be my little project. Uh, there's another project there. I'm going to be putting that stove in. Um, this was also uh, my grandpa's. Uh, came out of this house, actually. Kind of modified it a little bit. I'm going to put some new fire brick in there. Still got to paint the door, but repainted it. Got some get a pretty good blower on there might might be too much of a blower i don't know we'll find out but this is this right here whenever i was doing this um still gotta get fire break and everything work in progress um when i was doing this i was kind of doing a little research and it makes a lot of sense on the aspect of whenever you have a wood burning stove, you're drawing air in from your room, from your livable space, right? To feed the fire. So what comes in must go out and naturally, you know, it's gonna burn the oxygen out through the chimney, which in turn creates a vacuum in your livable space, which sucks in cold air. So. What we're going to do here, this is your intake for the fire. So I made this manifold. We're going to run a pipe outside to where it'll draw cold air in from the outside and draw it in here instead of pulling it in from the room. I'm going to put a valve somewhere. Don't know yet. That will control the, the flow of the fresh air. So I can actually control the fire. We'll see how that turns out. I'm going to move the pegboard. That's going to be gone. I got to move gas line. I don't really want a gas line right above my pipe. I'm going to have to plug that hole. And I want to move it over here more in line with the fireplace. So, probably like right there, that's where this mounting stud is, or slat, whatever you want to call it. From there, you can see the where he's got it mounted right there. So, from here, over, gone. So, yeah, that's a little update on a little, um, what I got in the works. So... Whenever I get to have a little time to work on this thing again, uh, and parts and stuff, we'll reconvene. So I was looking at this cylinder. Honestly, looks pretty good really doesn't look bad of course it needs some loving and again this thing doesn't owe anybody anything whatsoever this thing has been used buddy i tell you it's been used and that really looks pretty daggone good for the abuse it's went through it's got some discoloring which is fine it's okay, but there's no pits or grooves or nothing like that. I've 
taking my fingernail, try to catch something. Everything's nice and smooth. So that's not that right there. That is not uh, grooves. That's just discoloration. So I can definitely work with that. We can definitely make something happen there. So, this is kind of obviously been put to the side for a long time and uh, we're going to bring it back before my grandpa passed away he ended up getting um, one of them working uh, there, there are actually two of them I have this one and then my dad has the other one so the one that he got working on is when he has up there. So we're going to resurrect this dude. The one up there that uh, my dad has, we don't have a data plate for it. It's a little bit different. I'm thinking, I've been trying to really dig up some pictures and stuff, but I think where this thing's so stinking old that it's pretty well gone. You know, the only thing I can really scrounge up is some like service uh, bulletins or sales pitches, stuff like that. It's not really giving me a whole lot. So, you see, yeah, that's where we're at with it. So, I'll be uh, trying to make some videos, you know. Maybe we'll. Get you a better look at it. I'm going to be eventually pulling this back out. I'm going to do like a, a first burn in with it. I'm not going to do it in here. Um, this is a, I think it's a buck stove. Like I can't remember. There's obviously no parts for it. This right here, I'm going to end up. I got some sheets of stainless. I really want to use stainless on this. It's a lot thicker. This, this is where it came out of the fireplace. Uh, upstairs in the living room. You can see where it cracked right there. It had to weld that up a little bit. Um, this thing. Whew, a lot of wood been put through this thing. Again, I've already seen it, this thing. The front of the door is what the whole thing looked like. Um, it's been sitting for a while now since I painted it, so kind of looks a little crappy. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this, you know, bringing it back. Um, you know, more, more of a sentimental thing than anything, but... The more I dig into this, this thing is built like a freaking tank, man. They uh, definitely don't build them like this anymore. If they do, nobody can afford it. So, we'll uh, keep y'all in the loop.